Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching Top 10's Net, and in the video today, we're looking at the top 10 common misconceptions about famous organizations and societies. History is often written by the winners, or at least the survivors, and even in the present day, news is often presented with a bias. Many organizations will go to great lengths to cover up what they are truly about in order to continue to obtain funding and working towards goals that most people actually oppose. It's very easy for history, even recent history, to be blurred by the lens of misinformation. And our own biases and misconceptions make us far more susceptible to being convinced by untruth. Number 10. The incredibly manly Spartans were far more used to male love. Many people think of the Spartans as examples of the manliest of the manly men that ever walked the planet. They were a pure warrior society known for caring only about glory in battle and being the toughest you could possibly be. They also spent most of their time growing up completely cut off from female contact, remaining in military, barrack-like institutions that only allowed for training with other males. The Spartans were also well known for having pederastic relationships. It was encouraged for young training Spartans to have an older male to form a close relationship with, where the the older male was known as the inspirer and the younger as the hearer. More damningly, weddings were not formed through careful courtship, but essentially decided for the sake of convenience. Part of the wedding ritual also involved a sort of ritual rape, where beforehand the woman shaves her head and dresses in men's clothing. Some historians have theorized that this ritual was designed to help ease Spartans into having sex with women when they were normally used to having sexual relations with other men. Number 9. Despite their peaceful reputations, Buddhists have a history of violence. Buddhists are known around the world for being the most peaceful religion imaginable. Most people would never consider that Buddhists might engage in violence or goad violence on, mainly due to the actions of people like Gandhi and many monks who performed amazing acts of protest, such as burning themselves alive. However, Buddhism is not always an entirely peaceful and kind religion. Many people think that Buddhism believes intentionally killing is always wrong, but this is not necessarily the case. Buddhism tends to spend far more time worrying about the intention than the actual action. Monks have even prayed alongside soldiers, defending their actions by stating that they are not directly promoting death, but that it is better to have soldiers with a clear head. In some parts of the world, with Buddhist majorities such as Burma, also known as Myanmar, many monks have been accused of either not condemning or even goading on violence against Muslim minorities. The fallout from these actions has been brutal, as hundreds have died in deadly clashes, most of them Muslim. While Buddhism may be a mostly peaceful belief system, most most religions are as well. Humans just happen to be very good at finding excuses for violence. Number 8. The Knights Templar were mainly a group of very rich bankers. Many people think of the Knights Templar as some secret group of shadowy assassins or very powerful warriors. The Assassin's Creed video game series has led people to believe that they were an elite force of some kind, but the truth is a bit more boring. While they did have troops that fought for them, it's quite likely that most of them were far more loyal to their paychecks than they were to any nebulous cause. The Knights Templar were an early group of bankers who formed a lot of banking regulations and structures that are still used in some form today. However, while the Templars were not much more evil or mysterious than most powerful organizations in history, like most people, their influence became so large that they became a threat even to their own allies. As bankers, nearly everyone was in debt to them, and as the Crusades ended and support for their military campaigns ended, those who had debts with them started to look for an easy way out. When Pope Clement V decided he wanted to merge them with another organization, King Philip IV of France used the opportunity to start arresting large numbers of Templars. He did everything he could to encourage terror rumors about them, all because he was deeply in debt to them. While they had likely far too much influence and may not have been a particular force for good in the world, it's quite likely many of the crazier rumors were largely exaggerated by their enemies. Number 7. Peter actually kills animals and is against adopting them. Most people know Peter as the zany animal rights organization, but the fact of the matter is that they don't really care about animal rights at all. They are very much against people eating meat, and they are against people owning pets, but they don't actually really care all that much for the rights of animals, as many activists would think that they do. The truth is that Peter is good at getting attention, and also really good at hiding what they are truly about. Peter believes that the animal population is so out of control that until it is under control, the best thing to do is euthanize stray or even extra animals, even if they are perfectly healthy puppies and kittens. Peter's shelter at the headquarters isn't even certified to be an actual adoption shelter. They don't have the facilities or licensing to hold animals for more than 24 hours. 
Peter has killed tens of thousands of animals through quick euthanasia instead of even trying to adopt them because of their extreme beliefs. There is nothing wrong with being an animal rights activist, but there are many sane organizations out there that support such causes. Peter is not one of them. Number 6. The Suffragette Movement Wasn't Entirely Peaceful when many people think of the women's suffrage movement, they usually think of a largely peaceful movement full of marches and letter writing in order to ensure that women got the vote. However, while the United States movement was largely peaceful, across the ponds it was quite a different story. The British suffrage movement was marked by very militant tactics that some have even tried to label as terrorist. At times, they were known to plant bombs, commit acts of arson, smash in shop windows, as well as other acts of violence and destruction. Far from the image many people have of women's suffrage protests. While some of these actions made it to the United States, the British movement still remains the more violent of the two. This is likely due to the fact that the movement in Britain dealt with much more severe force in response to their protests, often ending up on the end of incredibly violent and brutal police beatdowns for daring to stand up for their right to have their voice heard. Some people think that it was only violence that won women the vote, but this would be also inaccurate. While the movement was more violent than many people think, it would have never been successful if it had only acted with destruction in mind. Number 5. Teddy Roosevelt and the Rough Riders were shameless glory hounds. Many people tend to think of Teddy Roosevelt as one of the great American giants, a man of unflinching honor and bravery who proved his mettle in battle time and time again. However, the truth is that everything about Teddy Roosevelt was carefully manufactured to create a very specific persona, and behind it all, Teddy was a shameless glory hound who wanted to be given accolades and be told how special he was. While he was Assistant Secretary of the Navy, he once said that he thought the country needed a war, all because he wanted all generations to get a chance to prove themselves as warriors. Some historians believe he had this complex because his father had chosen not to fight in the Civil War. Teddy Roosevelt abdicated other duties and left to form the Rough Riders with the sole intention of creating an elite group that would gain great glory and honor in battle. Later, after people had seen in the news of his glorious exploits, he said, I'm entitled to the Medal of Honor and I want it. His ego was incredibly large, and it is clear that he did not fight in order to protect his country or do his duty, but solely for the glory that he would receive from it. Teddy Roosevelt may not have been afraid to throw himself into a deadly battle, but he did it for all the wrong reasons. Number 4. Australia's crime-ridden roots of legend may be somewhat oversold. Many people have heard that somewhat insulting claim that Australia is a country where the people are almost entirely descendants of prisoners and prison guards. And while there is a certain level of truth to it, there is also a huge misconception about what prisoner means in this context, and that has led a lot of people to create a false impression in their heads. Now, England did send a lot of people off to Australia to form a new colony without any choice, but they weren't really the hardened criminals that many people think of. The truth is actually a bit sadder, and it shows how cruel and awful humanity can be. The types of people sent over tended to be completely non-violent offenders and other dregs of society who were usually very poor. In many cases, those sent over on the boats were children, and oftentimes the crimes they had committed were as simple as stealing a loaf of bread in order to eat, one of the least awful crimes possible. In other words, while many people think that England was sending over their violent criminals, they were mostly sending over the poor that they didn't know what to do with. Number 3. Russia's genocide of their own civilians easily rivaled that of the Nazis. Many people in the Western world tend to think of Hitler as the worst evil being who ever existed, at least in recent enough history to have full awareness of his actions and beliefs. However, the truth is that because the Russians were on the side of the Allies in World War II, the truth about what happened is often glossed over. Joseph Stalin is a man who could easily rival Hitler when it came to massacring and torturing innocent civilians, including those within his own borders. Stalin eliminated the Kulak class, a group of richer farmers, killing millions and deporting many millions more. Some of those who were killed were paraded naked in the street and even forced to dig their own graves. This elimination of the farming class caused a huge famine in Ukraine that led to the deaths of three to five million people. Stalin was also systematic in putting anyone who might be a part of an opposition group or any ethnic group he didn't like into brutal gulags. While he may have killed less than Hitler, the brutality of his camps easily rivaled that of the Nazis, and the Russians were good at hiding their overall body count. They never had other countries marching in to inspect the numbers either, so it's hard to be certain whether the figures we have haven't downplayed the atrocities. It's also little known that the Russian soldiers who liberated Germany and Berlin raped many of the women that they came across when freeing people from concentration camps. These women had already had to endure such horror, and now they had to endure even more from people who claimed to be their liberators. 
While some could blame the dehumanization of war that could affect any human being, and not just the Russians specifically, the damning part is that the Russian leadership knew of the issue and refused to do anything to discourage it. Number 2. The Amazons are an incredibly misunderstood group and less crazy than most people think. The Amazons are incredibly famous and known around the world, but most people are pretty hazy on who or what they actually were. Some people know them only as mythological and don't believe that they are even real, but they really were. Other people have taken to half fantastic tales that claim that Amazonians cut off one of their breasts in order to be better at firing arrows. This, of course, isn't true, and it actually wouldn't help you fire arrows better, not that we really need to say this. The even more common legends claim that they hated men and boys, and were mainly a lesbian society, and were very anti-man. The Amazonians were a group of ancient Scythian warrior women, indeed a mostly female society, but they had absolutely no quarrel with men, and certainly were known as being lovers of men as well. While there may be some truth to them giving male children away to neighboring tribes to be raised, there is no truth to the tales that they castrated their boys. While they were above such insane actions, they could still be quite a zany culture. They were certainly keen on enjoying themselves and smoked marijuana, got numerous tattoos, and even drank a fermented mare's milk with powerful mind-altering properties during some of their rituals. Number 1. The Founding Fathers didn't really believe in democracy that the way many envision it today. When talking about the direction that the United States of America should take in terms of political legislation and other decisions, many people will start theorizing about what the Founding Fathers would have wanted. Their names particularly come up when people are talking about freedom from tyranny and the people making their voices hurt. However, the truth is that the Founding Fathers wanted as little involvement from the common person as possible and cared little for the kind of democracy most people envision today. When the United States had formed a union but had not yet officially won independence, most states did not allow you to vote unless you were actually a landowner, although in some cases you were allowed to as long as you paid a high enough percentage of taxes. It was only after the war had been won that most states started doing away with the requirement to own land in order to vote, but that doesn't mean that everyone suddenly had that right. They eventually caved on the landowning thing because the war had largely been about the idea of no taxation without representation, so it'd be pretty hypocritical if taxpayers could vote. Shortly after the war, most states adopted laws allowing those who paid taxes to vote, but it was still some time before the laws became inclusive even to the common man who had so little to pay in taxes that he didn't qualify in many states, and much longer before minorities and women were allowed to vote as well. And while many people think of the Founding Fathers as people who are particularly against religious discrimination, many states in the early days of the Union did not allow Catholics or Jews to vote. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already for brand new videos just like this every day of the week. Also, over there on the right are a couple of other videos that you might enjoy if you enjoyed this one. And thank you for watching.